Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing endothelins and the heart, where we are looking at the effect of endothelin 1 on a cardiomyocyte. Okay, right, so we now are going to see what diacylglyceride is going to do uh, within the heart. Okay, right, and how this is going to lead to an increase in the force of contraction. So. Even though I've drawn the diacylglyceride as though it's coming off into the cytoplasm, it doesn't. It stays in the membrane. Basically, what phospholipase C beta does is it cuts off the head of the diacylglyceride. The head, this inositol 1,4,5-trisphosphate, goes off into the cytoplasm, whilst the diacylglyceride stays within the cell membrane, the phospholipid bilayer. So here is our diacylglyceride here. So let's colour it in to so stick to the convention. So, in orange, we have whoops, these um, long-chain carboxylic acid tails, and in green, we have the glycerol backbone. Now, what's going to happen is this is going to activate another enzyme which is attached to the phospholipid bi there. Okay. Now, this enzyme is known as protein kinase C, or PKC for short. So, this is the protein kinase C, a very famous enzyme. All the protein kinases are famous and important. Protein kinase C. Right, so what does protein kinase C do? Well, basically, it phosphorylates proteins. It phosphorylates proteins on serine and threonine residues. It is a serine threonine kinase. So, Let's just have a little discussion of what that means. So we'll discuss the structure of the amino acids, serine and threonine, and what it means to phosphorylate them. Okay, so let's have the structure of serine first then. So we'll start off with the core amino acid structure. So here's the alpha carbon with the amino group coming off it up here. Here's the carboxylic acid. So this is the generic amino acid structure. This is common to all amino acids. Okay, and then in the case of serine, the R group is a methylene group, like so, with a hydroxyl group coming off it like this. So this is the amino acid serine. Okay, and now let's have the amino acid threonine. So we'll have the amino acid threonine over here. So again, let's just start with the core amino acid structure, the alpha carbon with the amino group, and the carboxylic acid coming off a group coming off it down here. And then the R group of threonine is, again, you have a carbon with a hydroxyl group, and this carbon still has one hydrogen coming off it, but then also it has a methyl group coming off it. So this is the structure of the amino acid threonine. Okay, right. So, these two amino acids can be phosphorylated on their hydroxyl groups. Let me show you the structure of phosphate group. So the structure of phosphate group is that you have a phosphorus atom, double bonded to an oxygen, and then you have two alcohol groups coming off this phosphorus atom, like so, and then finally you have a single bond to an oxygen atom that has acquired another electron through an ionic interaction and therefore has a negative charge. Okay, so this is the structure of the phosphate group, okay? So this is the phosphate group, okay? And this has the, uh, the uh, molecular formula uh, H2PO4 minus. Okay, right. Uh, so, what's going to happen is you can add this phosphate group onto the hydroxyl group of the serine and threonine amino acids. So, you can remove the hydrogen off the alcohol group of the amino acid and the whole hydroxyl group off the phosphate group. Um, okay, and you can bind these together to make water. Now, this is why this sort of a reaction is known as a condensation reaction, because it produces condensation, basically. It produces water. Okay, and then what you'll do is you'll link this oxygen atom to the phosphorus atom, and this sort of a link between an, oxygen, well, between an alcohol group and a phosphate group is what's known as a phosphate ester link, or a phosphoester is being popularized. Phosphate ester link. Okay, right. So, this, a very similar reaction, more like the identical reaction, can happen to serine as well. 
and this is what protein kinase C catalyzes. Now, it doesn't catalyze the addition of a free phosphate group like this. Instead, what it does is it takes adenosine triphosphate, breaks the gamma phosphate off that ATP molecule, and then puts this phosphate onto the hydroxyl group. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.